Sungberg Lily. Yep, I got that right. The clinic that Nanjo had opened, and later passed on to his son, still existed on Nijima. The aged doctor was Nanjo's son, but the atmosphere about him was very different. Oh. Ah, Nanjo Masuyuki. Alright. Nanjo's son took over the Nanjo clinic. Unlike Nanjo, he gives a slightly dispassionate, indifferent impression. After the commotion surrounding Rokenjima, he grew to completely despise the press. And never again did he attempt to speak of what had happened at the, at the time. He used to have a daughter who was afflicted with an intractable disease, but unfortunately, she wasn't able to live out her natural lifespan. That must be the granddaughter that, I mean, grandchild that, um, Nanjo referenced at the end of episode 3, right before, um, he was killed by Ava Bay Trichy. Huh. Alright. Well, okay, maybe I should not act so, um, passive, because, uh, I just read that his daughter died, so yeah, that actually, yeah, I should not be as impassive, but... <laughs> Alright, yeah, no, 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 that is actually really sad. I was, I did not intend to sound cold right there, no. <laughs> well, now, this is not the way I wanted to begin this video. <laughs> Oh, I actually, actually really do feel bad for Masayuki. I actually do feel bad for Masayuki. Like, on top of his father dying, and also his daughter, he also got hounded by the press, as it may seem from his character sheet, so... Yeah, I feel really bad for him. I feel really bad for him. And I'm sorry, and I'm sorry if I sounded impassive there for a second. I was just, you know, getting back into the mood of Ubi Neko. <laughs> Alright, sorry about that. Nanjo's son spoke very indifferently. あの島の事故が倍土省などで非常に不謹慎に取り上げられて以来後宮氏の主治医であり友人でもあった父にも大変侵害な関心が多数寄せられました。その未だに強く憤慨しています。無理もないことと思います。私も同じようなものですので、私など6つの時から延々です。そうでしたね。これは失礼。The doctor finally remembered that Angie was also a victim, exposed to the same curious eyes as he had been. そんなあなたなら当時の件にもう関わりたくないという私どもの気持ちもお分かりでしょう。あれは不幸な事故でした。それを事件だと騒ぎ立てたがるのは無責任なテレビと雑誌だけです。彼らの態度には心底うんざり
あの事件で狂わされた人生の傷跡比べをするならば私とあなたでは比べ物にもならない<笑> Angie spoke sharply never having imagined that he would be talked back to in such a forceful manner the doctor couldn't help but fall silent from Angie's perspective The doctor was whining about absolutely nothing. She really wanted him to pack in his patronizing attitude. It was about time to make him understand how many days had passed for her before arriving on this island. The doctor realized that he had misspoken and remained silent for a while, looking uncomfortable. Tozi no koto o omoi dasu no wa kutsu de shou ga. Gozonji no koto ga atta ra, nan demo o shiete kudasai. もちろん口外はしません私は私の人生に決着をつけるために今日ここへ訪れています私は18です I got the light. I'm sorry. <笑>あの事件は私の人生の12年を奪ったそしてこれからも奪い続けるでしょう私は6歳のあの日からずっと暗闇に放り込まれたままなんですそんな私でも知る権利がないとおっしゃるんですかいや失敬たちの悪い連中ばかりが来ていたので私もつい身構えてしまったようです失敬したのをお詫びしますわ<笑>かりました多言無用を誓っていただけるなら何でもお話ししますありがとう先生ではお願いします何でも結構です話してください知っての通り父は後ろ宮市の主治医であると同時にチェスを通じた友人同士でもありましたその信仰は後ろ宮市が六軒島に移り住んできた当時からのとても長いものでしたどのくらい仲が良かったのですか相当だったようですチェスの縁で先方の屋敷に厄介になることも少なくなかったようです私の口から言うのもなんだが後ろ宮氏は非常に気難しい方でしたそして父はそんな人間と付き合うのに長けた非常におおらかな人だった孤独な後ろ宮氏にとって稀な友人であったことは想像に難しくないでしょう当日は親族会議でした Wow The way the music just got more intense as soon as、um, Rokojima appeared That was just perfect timing Just the sudden Done As soon as Rokojima appeared I don't know musical terms, so I apologize、um, if that sounded very、um, awkward. Ushiro Miyake no Shinzoku Kaigi wa, Shisan ya sono unyo nado ni tsui te kibishiku to are る Sanagara, Kee Kaigi no yona mono datta to sare teimas. Sono yona seki ni made shu seki o moto merare るほどに Nanjo sensei wa shin lai o ete ita wake desu ne. 父は純朴な医師であり後宮家のような富豪の財産運用について助言できるような立場にあったとは思いません He might have been there for emotional support for Kenzo? おそらく当時の後宮氏は健康状態が優れられなかったでしょうからその改造へとして呼ばれていたのでしょう親友の父ならおそらく口も固く親族会議場の秘密もきっと漏らさないと信頼されていたに違いない当時の後宮金蔵はかなり健康状態が悪かったのでしょうかカルテが残っていたりはしますか事故の当日はカルテを持参していたのでしょう後宮氏のカルテは残念ながらフォルダごと失われています父のクランケですし私も詳しいことは分かりません
事件の前後何か気になるようなことはありました<笑> You and your dad have similar、um, reactions to when you get asked hard questions They have very similar reactions あるにはありますですが非常に誤解を招きそうなのであまり言いたくはありません何ですかそれを教えてくださいアンジーは言った。差出人が私になっているのですがそれは身に覚えのないものでした何者かが私の名を語って出したということです宛先は北海道のレブン島北方領土の話を抜きにすれば日本の最北端の島ですその宛先人がなんとレブン島の住所ではありますが父の名前だったのです。It was truly a strange tale. Nanjo's son's name was written as the sender. However, he said that he hadn't mailed the letter. In short, that meant someone had sent it using his name. The destination was. Nanjo Teramaza. Oh, wait. Oh, I misread that. Oh, I misunderstood that line. No, it's. <laughs> it's his son sending messages to his dad. But his son didn't send the messages. So maybe I didn't misspeak right there or misunderstand what was written. No, maybe I didn't misunderstand that. And maybe, just maybe, which Nanjo using his son. Son's name <laughs> was sending mail to himself to continue on the mystery of Broken Chiba as a witch. <laughs> okay, I should stop Nanjo witch theories right now. I should stop that. <laughs> And it's getting to the point where I might have to admit that I might be wrong about the Nanjo witch stuff, but Nanjo will forever be a witch in my heart. The destination was Nanjo Terimaza. On Hokkaido's Raybun Island. Raybun Island? I think it's supposed to be not pronounced Raybun. Raybun? Yeah, I think it's supposed to be pronounced Raybun. You can correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. But the lot number written on it didn't exist. So the local post office had been unable to deliver it. And instead, send it back to the sender, Nanjo san. Is it a letter or is it not? If it's not a letter, I have a bad feeling. I'm very happy to be here. I'm very happy to be here. It's, bo it's a bone, isn't it? Teeth? I'm just thinking worst case scenario. I'm just thinking worst case scenario. The doctor stood up and headed for the bookshelf. There, 
dozens of dictionaries that could only have been ornamental were lined up one after another. A certain asserting in the strongest way imaginable that the owner was an intellectual. When he pulled several volumes out from there, a large, brown envelope was hidden behind them. He took it out and tossed it onto the desk. It had been carefully sealed with adhesive tape, and its faded color and dryness told that it had remained sealed for twelve whole years. <laughs> It's it's gonna be something like teeth or hair, isn't it? While emphasizing it so much, it was annoying. The doctor removed the seal with a quality paper knife. Then, when he tilted the envelope, an already opened mail envelope spilled out. The envelope had weight to it. Hinting that there was something other than a letter inside. Oh god, it's tea! It's gonna be so fucking tea! The recipient was certainly Nanjo Teramaza. Even seeing that was a huge shock. After that incident, Nanjo's corpse had not been found, and he was being treated as dead in absentia under extraordinary circumstances. It's gonna be something like Nanjo's teeth in there, isn't it? It's gonna be Nanjo's teeth, isn't it? Oh god, I don't know why, but I have a bad feeling that there's teeth in there. I have a bad feeling that there's teeth in there. And that might just be because of Corpse Party, yeah. There was like, something like this in Corpse Party, and there was this box, and there was teeth in it. I'm not gonna say too much detail, since I, I might be getting to Corpse Party spoiler territory, but oh my god. For some reason, mainly probably because of Course Party, I'm thinking that there's teeth in this envelope. And despite that, this letter addressed to a Nanjo in Hokkaido existed. One could almost take this as a sign that he had faked his own death and escaped to Hokkaido. Nanjo どう性同盟の人物が北海道に。父が何かの事情で事故を逃れ、北海道で存命していたのだとしたら、私たち家族にとっては事情に関わらず嬉しいことです。私も初めはその可能性を考えました。しかし、この封筒の送付先住所は存
if the destination address doesn't exist, mail is generally returned to the sender. But, even in the case of a faulty address, the local post office will opt in courteously, and to the best of its ability, research to find whether the sender's intended destination exists. When they still can't find it, the mail is sometimes returned after an investigation of several days. Hmm, <laughs> mail investigators. Huh, mail investigators, I... My dad was a mailman. I didn't even know that they did that. Oh my god. <laughs> well, he was a letter carrier, so... Yeah. Maybe I could ask some of his mailman friends about, um, investigations of finding senders, if that's something that happens in America. Huh, I never heard of that before, and my dad was a mailman. Huh. It seemed that this was what happened with this envelope, and the stamp was postmarked October 3rd. It was postmarked on Nijima. Nijima is a long way away from Reibun Island. On top of that, the destination was also nonsensical. It had taken more than a week for the mail to be returned. In other words, there was an extremely high chance that having this envelope returned to the sender after an inter intermittent amount of time had been the goal from the very beginning. Why do something like that? Even before asking what it was that had been sent, this envelope was already veiled in mystery. It's tea time, isn't it? After getting the doctor's permission, I tilted the already open envelope. Oh! A key? From inside came a small, folded letter, and a small key with a number tag attached. A swipe card slid out in addition. A112 was engraved on the key's number tag. I didn't know what it meant. The swipe card was pitch black, and had gold letters engraved on it. Members was written there in English. The jet black, gold lettered card design made it feel like something very high class. But of course, I didn't have a clue what kind of card it was just from that. I unfolded the letter. Its contents were extremely brief, and only the following was written. Oh! Zero, oh, okay, Z zero seven one five one one two nine. Hmm. Is it? Hmm. Weren't the um golden bars labeled with similar numbers? Yeah, in the room where Ava found the gold, weren't the gold weren't the gold bars labeled with similar numbers? Hmm. This could be something to find some pieces of the gold bars. Huh. Huh. Interesting. This could relate to golden bars or something. Maybe. I, I'm just saying some stuff. Stupefaction. And the name of a certain massive bank known throughout Japan as well as the word Central Branch. That was all. Oh, it's still for a golden bar that was put into a deposit box or something. Yeah. Yes, it's def there's definitely a golden bar in there. After he had 
finish putting his affairs in order following his father's funeral, he visited the bank. Pin and key and card. There was no doubt that something of great importance was stored there. And it was natural that he was curious about what that could be. At first, he didn't know what to do. The card wasn't properly his possession. When he mustered up his courage and showed the card to a, blank, to a bank clerk, he was then switched to a clerk of clearly high status and was guided to a large vault on the fourth basement floor. The security on the way there was strict. The doctor had himself stored valuable items such as real estate trans- uh, The doctor himself had stored valuable items such as real estate transcripts in safe deposit boxes before. But this was something on a whole different level. There's gold in there. Or there or his father standing in there in a rich robe. <laughs> so then カードをリーダーに通すと暗証番号の入力を求められました。そしてそこにある8桁の数字を入力すると認証され、金庫室への入室が認められました。すごい光景でしたよ。まるで He entered that room, along with the clerk. As soon as the card was read, the vaults he had a right to were apparently determined. So that safes he could open were lit with a green light, while those he couldn't open were lit with a red one. A11にはそれらの金庫のうちの一つを示すものでした。ちなみにそれ以外の金庫にも。ずらりと緑ランプが点灯していました。20個以上はあったと思います。うん。あるいは他の1角にももっとあったのかも。いずれにせよ、私の鍵は A11 As the clerk watched, the doctor unlocked and opened the safe. Gold bar! There's a gold bar in there! What he did, a safe drawer, like a large cabinet, opened. And an expes expensive looking. Dura Lumen case showed itself. That was carried into a separate room, where for the first time, the clerk left. And he was introduced to the contents. Gold. Oh. Gold.現金。どれほど？診察の百万円の束はちょうど厚みが一センチになると聞いたことがあります。それがこれだけのジュラルミンケースの中にびっしり詰められていたのですから。the price of a golden bar. Kazuita,分かりません。テスラは触れませんでしたから。私はすぐに直感しました。これは危険な金だと。It isn't normal to store a whole hundred million yen in cash in a safe like that, case and all. It's much easier to deal with if you deposit it into a bank account and turn it into a number. The very fact that they were unable to do that made it clear that there was something wrong with that cash. Hmm. 
I am sensing a, a conspiracy. I'm sensing a conspiracy. All right. This could be going similar directions to Higurashi then. If there's a conspiracy, that could be brewing with this. Hi. So no more sejo shinao shi. Moto no kinko ni azukete tachisari mashita. Kono kagi ya kado no shite o to omoi mashita ga nani ga okoru ka wakaranai. Is Angie going to go to the safe deposit box? She might. She might go to the safe deposit box. So no tome, dare ni mo nai sho de 12 nen mo no aida. ホンダの裏に隠し続けてきたのです。あれが何の金だったのか私にも未だに分かりません。この封筒をお借りすることはできますかいえ、この場で見るだけにしてください。わかりました。では、ちょっと失礼します。調べ物。I took Honei-chan's grimoire from the knapsack I had set down. Then, I opened to the page with the paragraph Beitrichi had written to Honei-chan, and compared the handwriting on both. Is it the same? The characteristic handwriting was unmistakable. Play. The one who had sent this hundred million cash yen in cash was Beatrice herself. But what is it? Something's bugging me. What is it? What is it? Mm. Oh. Mm. Hello, sir. So many objects have arrived. I think so. Huh? Who are you? Kacha! Are you at Dogo Nishimatakena? Kumasawa's son? Wait! You're Kumasawa's son? Wait, is it Kumasawa Virgilia? Or. What the hell? Huh? Wait, I'm confused! I'm confused! Is it Virgilia? Kumasawa? Or is that a way to interpret Kumasawa, Virgilia, or... Huh? Wait, what? Huh? Wh what? Hold on, hold on. Okay, I confused myself while sucking his AG while she was confused. But now, I'm actually legitimately confused as me, myself, because what? This is Kumasawa's son! But Kumasawa is Virgilia, or could be Virgilia due to the perception. A perception of Kumasawa could be Virgilia, but at the same time... Huh? What? Episode 4 is fucking me up! God dang it! This episode is just fucking me up, man! Kumasawa Sabakichi, Kumasawa's son, works at works at the Nijima Fishing Harbor. He must have gotten his carefree, big-hearted personality from Kumasawa. Kumasawa had many sons, and a number of them were away from land as fishermen. It was purely coincidence that it was possible to come into contact with him as he happened to be involved with the fishing harbor. Hopes are on him that he might have heard Shadi Kumasawa let something important slip, but... Hmm... Interesting. Wait, he's a fisherman, and his uh, mother really loves mackerel. That makes a lot of sense, actually. That makes a lot of sense, and um, his his shirt says something about fish on it. Like, I recognize the first kanji. I recognize the first kanji. That's the fish kanji. But I can't recognize the second kanji. 
I'm currently learning kanji right now, so... <laughs> yeah. The same envelope and contents had been sent to Kumasawa's son, who had once lived with her. But he had been very busy in the day since, and seemed to have forgotten about it among the hustle and bustle of everyday life. But apparently, its strange contents had stayed in his memory, and he remembered as soon as he as soon as Angie told him. After a bit of a wait, his thin lipped wife came in with an envelope, complaining that he always forgets where he puts things. The modus operandi for the sender and recipient was, exa was exactly the same as for Nanjo's son. The sender was made out to be Kumasawa's son, and the recipient was Kumasawa Chiyo. And the destination address was in the Okinawa prefecture. Hmm. First was Hokkaido, then Okinawa. Okinawa pre prefecture, Yaeyama County, Yonaguni City, 1, Two, three, four, one, five, one, six, seven. Yonaguni Island is at the westernmost tip of Japan, and the lot number was, exa was exactly like before, a sequential number that had apparently been chosen at random. Now it was certain. This envelope was definitely sent with the goal of having it, having it be returned to the sender. Its contents were exactly the same. A letter with the pin and the bank's central branch written on it. A swipe card. A key with attached number tag. The inscription on the number tag was A113. The number right after the one on the key that had been sent to Nanjo's son. Most likely, Inside the vault was the same kind of Dura Lumen case, packed with a hundred million yen in cash. Hmm. Shinda お嬢さんはこれが何かご存知なんですかね。ひょっとしてあんたのとこにも同じものが。はあ。Wait, did Angie, were you holding out on us on some information that we probably should have known earlier? どうしたんです?エンジ様。Hey, man. おりゅう。頭痛?頭痛?ごめん。Oh. And she also got a letter. She also got a letter. Wait a second. How do you forget something like this? How do you wait till now to mention this? This would this this would seem pretty important to tell us earlier. But you go ahead and explain, Angie. I remember. Scorpion Guts. I remember! A strange envelope was also sent to me 12 years ago! I had fallen into depression after losing my entire family. But it was a really strange thing to come in the mail, so a faint memory of it remained. It was a strange letter, which I had no memory of sending, but which had me as a sender. I forget the destination address, but the person it had been sent to was Ushimiya Rudolph, my father. I remember that I got this letter when I... Th I remember that I got this letter I thought was from my father who had died. I opened it up. Okay, I'm gonna repeat that one more time. I remember that I got this letter I thought was from my father who had died. I opened it up, and I found a key and a card that I 
didn't really understand. I remember feeling really confused. Being really confused. Being really confused. God. Okay, one more time. I remember that I got this letter I thought was from my father who had died. I opened it up, and I found a key and a card that I didn't really understand. I remember being really confused. I felt let down, and threw it away somewhere, I think. Where did I put that envelope? I probably lost it somewhere in the chaos I followed. By now, I have no way of checking its contents. But somehow, I think I can guess. I'm sure the contents were the same. Without a doubt, there must have, must have been a key, a card, and a note with a pin inside the envelope. Beatrice... これは何のつもりよ。あいつは全ての遺族にこんなふざけた金をばらまいたというの死んだ後もくろうするなんて許せない。オリオ、オリオ、やんじゃえ。サタロ hacked it nervously. As I looked at his worrying face, my agitation began to cool off bit by bit. ベアトリーチェに行くしは今に始まったことじゃないわ。あの6歳の日にもうすでにあの魔女とエンがあったことに驚きと怒りを感じただけよ。この12年間、エンジ様はずっとベアトリーチェ様の呪縛に囚われて
私だったら期日指定郵便にするひょっとしたら想定しない日に届くかもしれないという不安定さが私にはどうしても理解できないの So the person who said this is a big risk taker Hmm This could be spun to say that Kinzo did this because he loved risk But It may not have been Kinzo, even though this could, you know, point fingers at Kinzo being the main culprit because he loved taking risks. And the way he, the way the person who sent these letters was very risky. Kinzo liked risk. So, direction could be pointed at Kinzo sending these letters, but I don't think it's Kinzo who sent these letters. It has to be someone else who also enjoys taking risk. Hmm. So, whatever's going on here, the culprit is one for risk. I can't get anything out of that though. I can't get anything out of that though. Uryu. Demo, Tashkani, so you know, Beatora Shika, not the Omo. Oh. You know, I didn't think of a treaty as my first answer, but that makes sense. Eh? Anata. ベアトのことわかるのちょっとしかお話ししたことないけどでもベアトならこういうことをするかなってのがなんとなくわかるの Wait a second Hold on Wait what? Hold on Hold on Hold on a second You know about ベアト Wait what does this mean? Wait, what does this mean? Wait, does Angie separate Beato from Beatrice? Or, hold, what? Okay, I'm confused again. I'm really confused. Actually, the entirety of the past few episodes, it's just me sitting around confused at what's going on. <laughs> Melody, instrumental version. <laughs> That's kind of so come on. Beatrice Samanara, she shall carry no tegami, me tina, Christina Itazrava, Yarikarina to Moimus. Mm, so it occurs on Nocte. The Tai Kakujitna who hoj a Nocte, Chopiri, Kakujitna who hold a woe, Beatrice or Moshiro Garum. Okay, so they are okay. For some reason, I thought they were separating the witch Beatrice from, you know, Beato, but at the same time, I'm kind of confused by the use of Beato right there instead of Beatrice. Though, of course, that is the more familiar name. I don't know what I'm talking about, I'm sorry. <laughs> I remembered Maria Onechan's diary. It had quite a lot of descriptions of playing with Beatrice. Occasionally, some of these involved Beato playing pranks on the adult relatives with Maria. Okay, so, okay. For some reason, I thought they were separating Beato from Beatrice. Okay. Yeah, I thought that there was a separation of Beato and Beatrice, but Beato is Beatrice as much as Beatrice is Beato, but Beatrice is also a lot more complicated as a thing than just, you know, Beato. Or am I getting that totally wrong if Beato is basically Beatrice and I'm trying to separate um, two distinct sort of ways to view Beatrice? Beato as the, you know, cheerful witch. And Beatrice as the namesake witch. Okay, the way I'm trying to say this is Beato, aka the Beatrice we follow throughout the main majority of Umineko, is Beato, while Beatrice is what Angie's actually after, not Beato, but the concept of Beatrice. This whole concept of Beatrice, not, you know, the Beato, the woman herself. She's actually going against the thoughts of, you know, the mindset of the, um, yeah, yeah, of the, the, the concept of Beatrice. The amalgamation of 
the Witch of the Island. It may not be something fully magical, but just the, you know, symbolism of the force that was behind the incident. Beatrice, not Beato the woman herself. Or I'm totally just saying shit right now. Oh my god. I So many people are going to get confused. Don't worry, I'm also confused by what I'm trying to say here. I'm trying to make sense of this episode when I should just be sitting down and just enjoying it. But I'm trying to make sense of it, which is probably my biggest mistake while playing this episode. I'm trying to get some sense from this when... Yeah, there's nothing you can really... There's nothing that could really help you trying to make sense throughout this entire episode. Ah, trying to make sense of this episode is really messing with me, so I'm just, you know what? No more side comments. No more side comments. I'm just going to play the rest of this chapter and enjoy it. But those pranks always followed a certain little aesthetic principle of witches. Which was that things are more fun if they are uncertain. One day, Maria Onechan had brought up a wind-up minicar, and she and Beato decided to use it for a prank. It was a popular toy at the time. If you made the minicar back up, it would wind up the spring in the tires, and when you let go, it would race forwards. They had wound up that minicar and set it in the shadow of a milk jug. In other words, the prank was that, if you lifted the milk jug, the minicar would jump forwards and surprise whoever did it. Hoping that someone would, would get caught in this prank, Onei-chan and Beato had watched the adults from the shadows for their whole tea time. They were looking forward to seeing who would get caught by it, but ultimately, no one had moved the milk, the, the trap milk jug, and the trap never went off. When Onei-chan then muttered, We should have put it somewhere where they definitely get caught by it. Beato apparently said this. She said, Traps where you don't know who will get caught, or whether anyone will get caught at all, are more thrilling and fun. It's probably true that you wouldn't get that kind of excitement from a trap that would definitely catch someone. This kind of description occurred in multiple places, making it possible to guess that the witch called Beatrice had quite a fickle character and loved a random thrill. A fickle person is always hard to deal with, is very hard to deal with. I can't flip over the chessboard to find out what that witch from 12 years ago was planning. So, maybe she's not separating Beato from the concept of Beatrice like I mentioned. Yeah, I don't think she's separating the two. Yeah, I messed up there. As Angie thought these things over, her gaze wandered from place to place. Then, she suddenly showed interest in the wall. There, a number of framed photographs were hung. Many were commemorative photos from when the Kumasawas got together as a family, or went somewhere to play, and Kumasawa herself was in many of them. Of them. Still with a smile that made it so you could almost hear her light-hearted, ho 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 ho, laugh. It's a distant memory. But I do remember that she was definitely this sort of cheerful old lady. Kumasawa-san,事件の直前に変わった様子はありましたか? <laughs> Among the numerous frames, there was one that had something other than a picture of people in it. Thungberg Lily. It was a photograph of an enlarged relief of a door from a western-style house or something. 
Huh. I couldn't see any interesting subject in particular, which actually bugged me a little, uh, bugged me a bit, as I wondered why anyone had gone to all the trouble of taking it. As I got closer, I realized that some text had been written in pen. それは、お袋の There was an arch above the western style door, and that arch had a relief. Oh, is this the arch from the chapel? It was an inscription in English, and that seemed to be the focus of the photograph. The pen writing appeared to be a translation into Japanese. Oh. Uh, thousand, million, billion, trillion, one and one quintillion. Yeah, that's what that number reads. あなたは千兆分の一の確率でしか祝福されない。知らないわ。こんな文章、気分にもお姉ちゃんの人気にも出てこない。お袋の遺品の中に気分の謎解きに挑戦してると思われる写真やノートが結構出てきたんですわ。Did she solve it though? That could explain Virgilia if she solved it. That could explain Virgilia if she saw it. I'll save that for the end of the video if I remember. Because I don't want to make a sudden theory now and then absolutely get wrecked later. お袋も案外そういうのが好きだったんだな。なんでも10トンの金塊が隠されてたって噂だ。それはお袋も夢中になるはずだすわ。Kumasao、Kumasao both Maria Onichan's diary and in her grimoire, there was a description of the witch's epitaph. It mentioned about how it was a ritual to open the door to the Golden Land, and Beatrice's resurrection ritual, and Beatrice's succession ceremony, and so on. Maybe the most interesting one was the last line, the succession ceremony. According to Beatrice, if you were able to solve the witch's epitaph, you would receive not only the ten tons of gold, and the Ushira Mira Ushia Mia family inheritance, but her own magical power and name, as well as the title of Golden Witch. Among the Ushia Mia family at the time, the witch's epitaph was thought of as a difficult quiz, with the head, Kinzo, had prepared to select his successor. But in the Maria Sociere interpretation, the questioner was Beatrice herself. And she had posed the question in part to choose her successor. There were slight discrepancies in the details of the two interpretations. Either way, its disturbing contents brought to mind a bloody serial murder. And both of the message bottles depicted a crime that followed that pattern. If I could solve the witch's epitaph now, twelve years later, I wonder if I could expose some plot made back then. I had tried to solve it many times myself, but I never did have a clue what it meant. It seems that many witch hunters have been trying as well. I also found theories like the La Plata theory and the In Inora theory in certain books. However, None of these theories were conclusive. Well, 
誰が何を持ってるやらさっぱりですわはあ申し訳ない、hmm. Are we visit all the Kumasawas? この熊沢さんが撮影した英文だけ読むとめったに開かれない開かずの扉という印象を受ける Was that the room where the gold was? That could be the room where the gold is, not the chapel. でもこれは屋敷のどこかしら光の具合から屋外みたいだけど、hmm. 熊沢さんはこの中にその黄金が隠されていると睨んでたのかしらさあいずれにせよ六軒島の屋敷のどこかでしょうな Instead of blazing around in the mansion, she might have been looking for the gold this whole time. Okay, no, 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 no. I should, you know, just continue on reading and then make theories at the end. おふくろの預金口座には残念だが黄金を発見したと思えるようなお金は入ってませんでしたよ。さすがに見つからんかったんでしょうな。Hmm. Or maybe she didn't find it until it was too late. The Golden Witch, Beatrice, gave 10 tons of gold to Kenzo, which meant that the witch was the true owner of the gold. Beatrice was the owner of all the vast fortune of the Ushimiya family. The witch holding this vast wealth had massacred the humans on Rokenjima on that day, and sent large amounts of money to the surviving relatives like it was a game. Like hell, it's a letter from the dead. This is desecration of the dead. I was once again convinced. My family, who died on the island that day, didn't die and go to heaven. They are being trapped by the witch even now, and are being desecrated and tormented for all eternity. Interesting. The last place Angie visited. Was a store in a region where residential and commercial areas intermingled with a signboard saying Marufuku Sleep Shop. There lived the man who had been the captain of the ferry boat to Rokunjima at the time. Huh, okay. Even he, who had once lived as a man of the sea, Had retired after contracting a serious illness and was now being taken care of at the house of his son and his son's wife. Captain Kawabata. An old man who used to be the captain. Oh, no, let me repeat that. I'm sorry. An old man. Who used to be. who used to captain the high speed boat that went to Rokunjima and back. It is beyond doubt that of the existing survivors, he is the one of those who know the most about Rokunjima. From various comments by the servants who used to go to and from the island, the media hoped he might be quite knowledgeable about the internal affairs of the Ushimiya family. However, he would say nothing, and so they eventually began to forget about this old man. Captain Kawabata. Hmm, interesting. Interesting. The guy who really likes speeding onto islands. Anta, mada konna ni chisa katta. Lippa ni natta na. So shite, saazo ya tsura katta da ro. Omae san no kimochi, yoku wakaru zo. The former boat captain was so full of energy that you couldn't really tell why he had retired in the first place. His memory seemed clear too. He had a good memory of things that had happened more than a decade prior, and it seemed that he could even remember how Angie had been at the time. The lively conversation was very helpful for Angie, but at the same time, the captain also remembered the final family conference very well. And the fact that he had detailed memories of even Bowler's gonna fall, gonna fall uproar on the boat was instead painful for Angie.
It had been back. It had been so back then as well. But even now, there is no public way to cross the ro to cross the Rokinchima. It was necessary to make an individual request to an owner of a boat to make the voyage. I still hadn't managed to arrange for a boat to Rokinjima. So if he refused me, the voyage to Rokinjima would probably become hopeless. It's something to do with demons. I remember that. The original name of um, Broken Jima, right? Yeah, since it has Aku in it. この辺りの船乗りじゃ首を立てには振る舞いな。I think Aku Jima has something to do with demons in the name. The game might correct me in a second. Yeah, the game's probably gonna correct me in a second, but I think Akuji Kijima has something to do with demons in the name because of the Aku. Originally, Rogenjima had been feared as an island of disaster by the fishermen. And when that incident happened 12 years ago, that fear reached its peak. They respected the sea, feared it, and revered it. There were almost no sailors who would try to take a boat to the Curse Island. Because of that, most of the witch hunters were unable to cross over to Rokinjima, and were limited to taking a trip around the island. Ironically, this caused the mystique surrounding Rokinjima to increase even more. And resulted in the proliferation of the bizarre witch stories they loved so much. Hmm. Oh, he's he's so in he's so in he's so in he loves voting so much that he'll definitely do it, even though he's sick. Novelette. Oh my God! Yes, I knew he was gonna say yes. The former boat captain promised that tomorrow he would go back to his previous job and take his boat out to Rokinjima. With this, I managed to secure a method of transport to Rokinjima. This is probably all I can do on Nijima. All that, all that's left is tomorrow on Rokinjima. I'll reach the final destination of a journey that stretches back twelve years. よかったね。これで島へ行けるようになったね。そうね。船を見つけるのは難しいと聞いていたから、船長が協力的で助かったわ。エンジ様ほどではないにしても。船長にとっても12年前の事件は未だ抜けない棘なんでしょうね。オリュ。船長さんも心の整理がつかなかったんだね。ずっと。そりゃそうでしょう。約束通り10月5日にあのじいさんが船を出してくれれば大勢が助か
they probably had their own circumstances preventing them from easily pushing it back to next week just because the typhoon was approaching. It wasn't about Captain's fault. But perhaps you could say that he didn't feel so guiltless that he could place the blame wholly on the typhoon. Certainly, just as these two said, there's no doubt that the boat captain has been dragging the events of 12 years ago along with him this whole time. And, by taking me, the last member of the Shiamia line, to the island, and bringing me back safely, he might be trying to find some resolution for the past. The ボネは昼過ぎに帰ってくることになってる。それからあんたを長居うん。It's not like I have a goal of doing something in particular on Wokenjima. So, the time of day I'll be staying there is evening. The evening, which straddles between... Uh, I'm gonna repeat that. <laughs> I was reading the bottom line before getting to the first line. The evening, which straddles the two different worlds of day and night, seemed almost like a borderline between this world and the next or possibly between 1998 and 1986, and felt like the most fitting time to visit Rokunjima. It's not like I'll be doing anything on the island. Staying there for just a few hours will be just fine if I can feel some closure. <laughs> Alright, it's about time I finally say this. To pronounce this character's name, you don't say Amaska. You say Amakuza. Amakuza. I don't know why I pronounce his name as Amaska, but apparently I think you're supposed to pronounce his name Amakuza. Yeah, Amakusa. Amakusa. Sa. Yeah. I just want to say this now. I was waiting for him to appear again to finally say that. Thank you all for correcting me in the comments. I don't know where Amaska came from. At the time, there was a small knock on the paper sliding door, and Amakusa ha stuck his head in, tapping his watch. I nodded back and told him I got on hold of a boat for tomorrow. That's <laughs> あ、任せておけ。お前さんたちの難儀な事情も聞いとる。わしも当時のワイドショーを見ていて面白半分に事件をかき回す連中に虫図が走っとったもんだ。協力はおしまいよ。ありがとうございます。それでは明日お昼に
ございます。How much did Kenzo pay everyone who works for him? How much did he pay them? He must have paid them decently if Kawabata was, you know, refusing the lot, the lot of money that、um, Angie was giving him. He must have paid them a shit ton. Huh. How much did Kinzo pay the people who worked for him? That's a really interesting concept. How much did he pay them? I went down the steep staircase that was the exact opposite of accessible. It was getting hard to believe that there had actually been a chest of drawers and a TV in the room upstairs. Most of the first floor was a bedding store, with many futons piled up on each other. The captain followed behind us as we weed our way through the cramped futon shop. After cautiously checking around outside, Amakusa dashed out first and started up the car. ご迷惑はかけられませんので事情は知らんが相当な厄介に巻き込まれてるようだなうさんくさい連中が人探しをしていると噂になっとるスーパーダーラスあんたのことじゃないのかねうんそうエイジプレイダム But it looked as though the boat captain had guessed. I was a little bit of a captain who 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 was a little bit of a だからわしにその仕事を終えさせてくれよわかってるな<笑>ええ別に私は死にに行くんじゃないでも part of me does feel that if I could die on that island I would surely be able to go to where my family is. I had finally become aware of it. I might have been planning to die on that island. I might have come all this way, heading for Wokumjima, in search of a place to die. The boat captain had guessed that as well. And so, for emphasis, he told me again don't. ええ、死にません。約束します。そもそも私、どうして六軒島に行かなくてはならないのかの目的さえ、未だに危うやなんですから。いや、目的はきっとある。あんたにないなら、それは彼らにあるんだ。島があんたを呼んだ。だからあん
There was the sound of a car stopping in front of the store, and a short honk could be heard. <laughs> I'm sorry. Hmm. <laughs> Damn. I'm going to give a big hand for Kawabata. I'm going to give a big hand to Kawabata. Big hand to Kawabata. He could have potentially helped, possibly, you know, save Eiji's life. So I have to give him a big hand. He might have possibly helped, you know, save Eiji's life, in a way. Though, of course, there's still the rest of this episode to go, so I don't know if he was successful. He made an attempt, though, so I have to give him a hand. I got past the stacks of futons in the narrow store, and was about to go outside. Just then, my feet stopped. What happened? Ah, Huh? F style. Trembling all over, I pointed at it. But no matter how much the boat, the boat captain squinted, he noticed absolutely nothing in that direction that should have surprised me. That means. That means. What is it? What is it? She just got a hit, didn't she? She got a hit. I was frozen in position, shaking, pointing into the semi darkness inside the store. Can he not see it? ありがとう、船長。全部全部。これは運命だったんです。ここに私が訪れることさえ運命だった。これが私が六軒島へ行く目的で使命なんです。エンジさん。どうしましたトラブルですかわしにおさっぱりわからんお嬢ちゃんが暗がりを指さしたまま固まっちまったんだエンジさん大丈夫ですか何が見えるんですかあなたたちには見えないのそれよそれ見えないの見えるのはただの陳列なのです誰も言いやしませんぜオリオエンジェ僕には何が何だかわからないよ。スプレイケースオッケーこれは夢なのスプレイケース魔法なのどういうことなのワールドビーンのスプレイケースインアフォーニュ
Okay! This next chapter is gonna be quite... This next... <laughs> this next chapter is gonna be quite interesting. Alright. Alright, so I guess I get to end this video off with two theories. Two theories. <laughs> Alright, might as well go with the more recent one first. Might as well go with the more recent one first and the more likely to be, you know, true. Alright. What did Angie see in the display case? Now, with all signs pointing, it's something that would cause Angie to, you know, realize a purpose to go to Rokinjima. And she mentions Maria and Beatrice. Mammon and especially Saktaro seem a little bit, um, freaked out by the thing that Angie has found. Especially Saktaro. For which gets me to think, could it be in that display case? Saktaro's in there. That would be ridiculous, but... Maybe, but maybe, Saktaro's in there. For which brings me to the thought of, did Rosa re-accept his existence? And was planning on, you know, recreating Saktaro, but on the way to Broken Jima, a lot of things happened, she left him on the boat or something, and was planning on giving him to, you know, Maria after the conference? Or maybe, when she was making Saktaro, somebody else in her company saw her plans for Saktaro and the design, and they went to recreate Saktaro. But would that really be an answer? Someone else made a new Saktaro based on Rosa's design. Like, the only thing that I'm thinking right now that could be in that display case of a futon store that sells other sleeping accessories, it has to be a stuffed animal. A stuffed animal that children would, you know, fall asleep with, or for some random guy on the internet to hold in his lap while he's reading video games. All I can think of, it's a variation of Saktaro. Either Rosa reaccepted his existence and Kawabata just, you know, left it on display after finding it in his boat. And, well, that would also not explain some things as to why he had it on display and why he was so confused when Angie saw it. So, am I, I might have to be someone else saw the plans for Saktaro if this, whatever's in this way case, if it is Saktaro, somebody saw Rosa's, you know, designs of Saktaro, and after her death, went ahead and recreated Saktaro, and made a commercial. But how would Angie have not heard of that if, you know, a design of Rosa was, you know, being reused in the 1990s? Or, you know... No one connects it to Rosa. Ah! The display case actually makes somewhat sense if you think about it, if it's, you know, Saktaro, but the manner in which how he got in there, that's when you get confused. But it would make total sense that that's Saktaro, which was why, you know, Angie figured out what she might need to do on the island. Return Saktaro to Maria by going to the island with that with what that, what, what's that for in the display case. Like, that's the only way I see how the story could progress after what she found in the display case. That's just my, dis that's my theory what's in the case. And now, let's have a little bit of fun. Let's have a little bit of fun. Kumasawa. Kumasawa. Let's see our favorite macro lover. Kumasawa. She had been looking for the hidden gold of the Ushiamiya family for a long time. During the times when people thought she went off to doze off in some rooms, maybe she was searching the island for the 10 tons of gold. She wanted the gold. And what happens if, as she was getting closer and closer to the answer, it just so happened the night of the family conference, she found the location of the gold. It wasn't Ava who found it first, it was Kumasawa. After years of investigation and years of looking around the island, she might have been lucky and found the gold.
which would make total sense. She has worked on Rokunjima for a long time. She has worked for a great many years. So, she might have found the gold after all that experience and all that time she spent on the island. She was able to be able to navigate the island so well that she was able to pinpoint certain locations where the gold could have been. And during her break times, she went looking. She went looking. And it just so happened. On the night of October 4th, 1986, she officially found the gold. But she was not so lucky. Maybe but possibly the culprit did not give mercy upon Kumasawa like they might have done to Ava. Instead, they have Kumasawa get trapped up in the incident, or Kumasawa did not accept did not accept anything but the money. Which could have made whoever is behind all this maybe a little bit upset. Or maybe not. Who knows? Because there is the existence of Virgilia. Virgilia could be a version of another interpretation of what happened on Rokunjima, where Kumasawa found the gold and became Beatrice. She could have found it first, and Beatrice could represent someone else on Rokunjima. Maybe, but maybe. The first iterations of the story was Kumasawa finding the gold first and then becoming Beatrice. In the next iterations of the story, someone else became Beatrice through the form of Beato. And, in my honest opinion, I think the culprit is that very person. Is that very person. But of course, I have no fucking clue who could represent Beatrice. Who in the hell could represent Beatrice? Because it's not going to be Kenzo. It's not going to be Kenzo. Nor Klaus, nor Natui. Nor Eva, because there's the existence of Eva Beatrice. It would not be Hideyoshi. It would not be Rudolph. It would not be Kyrie. Okay, it won't be Nanjo. It won't be Genji. It won't be Shannon. It won't be Cannon. It won't be Goda, sadly. Kumasawa is Virgilia. So, I'm pinning it up to the possible idea of who could represent Beatrice in finding the gold, and one of my suspicions could be Rosa herself. She encountered a Beatrice on the island, but that Beatrice had died. So, what as if Rosa could be a representation of Beatrice? She found the gold. In more interpretations, she took on the form of Beato and Beatrice. This is a weird-ass theory, but that could be Rosa's witch form. She found the gold as well. Like, in many timelines, it's influenced that, it's kind of, you know, shown that Rosa is capable of finding out the location of the gold. She is very capable of doing that. I'm also axing a Maria since, well... <laughs> I don't... I can't really think of anything for Maria, but my main suspicion... It might be Rosa who represents Beato. Though that would be a very weird thing to prove, but there are some indications that it might very well be Rosa who's a representation of Beato because when she was young, she saw the death of Beato. For which she could take on that form in the interpretation of the witch. But does that make her the overall culprit? That's where I'm stuck. Would this make her the overall culprit? Would this make her the overall culprit? She is capable of finding the gold, but is she capable of being the mastermind? That's where I'm getting into some questions. Could she have been the mastermind? In episode 3, she also found the location of the gold, but was outsmarted by Ava by just a few minutes. But in episode 2, she made it to the very end. And if it wasn't for her twisting her ankle, she couldn't got she could have gotten away with it. So all signs could point to a Rosa culprit, the mastermind. But huh. 
Could that be the case, though? Could that be the case, though? With all of her, you know, time spent on work and going on vacations without Maria's knowledge, could she have put together this elaborate plan? Could she have put together this elaborate plan and then made up a bunch of stories about what happened on the night where she killed her family? Is that a possibility? Yes, and also no. I'm not saying any of this in peak and oh my god, there's a thunderstorm going on outside. Okay, I'm gonna end this very quickly, just in case my power comes out, but anyways, anyways. Rosa is a candidate for the ultimate culprit, from the reasoning I just said right here. I have some beliefs that the main culprit overall could very well be Rosa. Though, of course, I'm not gonna give the benefit of that towards Valor. I have nothing to support this, but Valor could also be the one that represents Beato if he found the gold. Though, of course, there's no way to prove this, there's no way to even, you know, think of how that could work. But, Fowler is also another candidate. Fowler and Rosa. Rosa is the adult with the most story added to her, so I wouldn't be surprised if she could be the overall culprit behind everything. So, yeah. 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 I think I found my first candidate for overall culprit. Rosa! I think I found my first overall culprit. Oh my god, the rain is getting harder. Oh no. <laughs> did I- did I say something so correct that- So correct that Rosa's trying to kill me before- Kill me before I guess the answer to Umineko? Oh jeez, yeah, there is a storm going on outside and the rain's getting harder and it, and that happened as soon as I started saying my theory about Rosa. Fuck, man! Fuck! Holy shit! I'm actually legitimately getting goosebumps now. The storm did not pick up until I started saying the stuff about Rosa. Fuck! Holy shit! Can I control the weather with my theories, or is Rosa more than a game character, or more than a witch, or more than the representation of Beatrice in regards of how she found the gold? Maybe? Oh my god! Ah! Why am I getting actually goose- Oh my god, I'm actually getting a little bit of the shaking right now. Holy shit. This is- Is this a coincidence? The storm going on right now? Is this a coincidence? Or am I onto something? I am not saying anything in pink, though. I'm not saying anything in pink. But... Fuck, man. Yeah. This conclusion that I'm having about Rose right now could easily bite me in the ass or be so correct that she's trying to punish me with a thunderstorm right now. Good thing I'm the only one in my house right now. If there was, um, 18 people, well, there might be some problems. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> She's flooding the ditch! Oh my god! The ditch is flooding! What? This was not like this this morning! There's like one foot of water! Ah, Rosa, why? Okay, okay.